I contribute 10% of salary into my pension, which will be 65% of my salary when I retire. I contribute another 10% to a 457B plan and also max out my Roth IRA. I'm only 32. Am I contributing too much? Well, Lane, you've got some financial priorities in order there for sure when it comes to retirement. You obviously are forced likely to put that 10% into the pension, and that's going to be great to replace your uh, much of your employment income in retirement. You're going to be ahead of the game for uh, ahead of most people for sure because we know pensions are going away. We've talked about that on this show before, that only about one in five uh, American workers right now uh, have access to a pension in retirement, and almost all of those anymore, John, are government workers. Yep. Uh, there aren't very many private pensions at all. All all the corporations, it seems like, are freezing pensions, offering lump sum buyouts. And if you are a private uh, worker there or, or work in the private workforce, I would definitely say that that is something you need to consider, that all of that may change if you're only 32 and you work a long time at the same company. But if it's a government pension, it's not likely to. You're contributing 10% to a 457B plan. I'm also going to assume that he's probably a government worker if that's the case, right? right? Because a 457B, just a moment to talk about what that is for the audience, that is a retirement account, a retirement plan, but it's a little bit different than a 401K uh, or even a 403B for that matter. They're set up for people who work uh, in the public sector and likely will be having the opportunity to retire prior to a traditional age, like 60 or 65. Yeah, it's a deferred compensation plan is essentially what it is. And and so there are some uh, levers that you can pull as far as retirement is concerned. If you have one of those programs, it makes it a little bit easier for you uh, to plan for an early retirement. Also maxing out a Roth IRA. Uh, let me just say, Lane, great job on everything that you're doing here. Congratulations. You're doing well. I want to get to her question, though. Uh, I'm assuming Lane is a, is a female. I'm only 32. Am I contributing too much? Scott, I have been uh, in this industry for 30 years, and I've never seen anyone arrive at retirement and go, you know what? I just saved too much money. I just, I, I don't know. I screwed this up, and I just saved too much money, and I'm going to have these consequences because of it. The only consequence you have of saving too much money for retirement is, is you have to pay tax on the money if it's pre-tax dollars. But in Lane's case, they're saving uh, some money into a Roth IRA, which is going to help there because that should be tax-free income. And I say should be. It is under the current law tax-free income unless somebody in Washington goes and screws that up. But that's where we are with Roth IRAs right now. So I, I think that, that assets are great, but one of the things that we want to really talk about here is working toward that income replacement and, and yeah. focusing on the income part of that. Yeah, so to get some answers to this question for Lane, you're 32 and it's hard to think about. You know, So obviously a priority is retirement for Lane because she's putting so much money back and she's asking this question. But it's a long time off. It is certainly a moving target when you think about when you're going to retire. Now I think those get a little... Those details get a little more fine if you know you have a pension at a certain age. That's that's a valuable piece of information. But you need to identify when your retirement age is going to be. What What is your target there? And when you arrive there, using a pension estimate and using savings and uh, contribution rates and growth, estimated growth over that long period of time, where are you going to end up from an asset level? But as John's already mentioned, Retirement is not an asset uh, problem. It is an income problem. Turning those assets into a reliable retirement income stream is where you need the plan to, to really shed some light on. Because are you can contributing too much? I mean, it's, they'll be able to sh if you plan, you'll be able to see where you're going to end up and what that looks like in retirement. It may allow you to maybe divert some of those dollars to some intermediate goals. Do you have a goal? I don't know if you're only 32. Do you even own a house? Do you have a goal to be a homeowner? Do you have a goal to go on a big trip? There can be some intermediate financial goals that are not just retirement, but before you start making changes to your retirement contributions, you have to have that plan in place, John, to know where you're going to end up. Where is the finish line? Yeah, I think the question becomes, Scott, where do I spend my 
best spend my next dollar. You know, if you're thinking about maybe I'm over contributing here or I have some breathing room to maybe pull back some contributions, then what? Then what is the next step that you're going to take with that dollar? Number one, if you have debt, then we would say, okay, let's analyze where you're going to be in retirement. And if you could pull back some dollars, then let's get rid of debt. I think that uh, depends on uh, the type of debt. You know, you could uh, address that in, in a couple of different ways. I think you have to, as you mentioned, Scott, assess your lifestyle now. Are there some intermediate things that you want to do? You certainly don't want to, uh, you know, starve yourself from life experiences and some fun in, in life and things of that nature just to arrive rich at retirement and maybe die and not ever get to spend all that money. Yeah. So there, there's some balance there that has to come into play. But there's also maybe the opportunities for early retirement. We touched on this just a little bit. The 457 plan gives you an opportunity to tap into deferred compensation prior to the traditional 59 and a half retirement age. And a little known fact that uh, there's a lot of argument about, but this is <laughs> black letter law in the IRS code, that you can access Roth IRA contributions prior to age 59 and a half, no tax, no penalty, because that was your after-tax money that you put in in the first place. You can uh, take withdrawals out of a Roth IRA all the way up to your basis in that Roth IRA and not be taxed, not be penalized on it before 59 and a half. So that is a planning mechanism that we use periodically with Roth IRAs if we have someone who is retiring. Yeah, you let the cat out of the bag there, right? I did. That, that is a little known fact, and it's certainly I don't think you want to go into a Roth IRA thinking that you're going to pull back out uh, before retirement. But if you need to, that is certainly an option. But again, Lane, you're off and running. You're doing a great job at 32. Uh, we would just encourage you to get with a financial advisor and build a retirement plan so you can know where where you're going to land in retirement and give you some options there uh, if, if you are putting in more than you're going to need for your lifestyle in retirement.